So take a look at this. And now take a look at this. This is what a lot of people see every day on their way to work. And this is what you could see. Merlin is an undriver, and she bikes a lot for transportation. One day she was riding to work, and she saw a flower growing out of a crack on the, so in, on the street there. She posted a photo like this on Facebook with the comment, I would have missed this if I had been driving. These two photographs represent two points along a spectrum. Where are you on that transportation spectrum? Wherever you are, I'm going to give you license to move freely along there and then beyond. So why does it matter about moving on the spectrum? Well, according to NASA, cars are the largest net contributor to climate change pollution. And research also shows that of all the household behavior changes that we can make, reducing our car use is the one that can make the biggest difference. And it's also the hardest one to change, which is really no surprise for all of us because we know that our culture is really built around the automobile. So here's a really promising trend. Young people, and we're talking teenagers, 20s, 30s, young people are driving way less. Young people are not getting their licenses as much as they used to, and they're also choosing not to own a car. So there's plenty of work for people at this end of the spectrum to do because here's what's happening on the other end. This 12-year-old girl just got out of her grandmother's car, which was driven from her house, so she can get on the school bus. So this might seem like a really extreme example, but we're all, to some degree, a little bit asleep sometimes about car use. And what is it going to take? What can we do to move? What can we do to create some change? So the answer to that is undriving. Since 2007, we've been issuing undriver licenses and using this as a spark to encourage people to think differently and really move themselves on the transportation spectrum. So here's our undriver licensing station. We've been to about 70 different conferences, festivals, workplaces, and schools all over the region. And it starts with a question, an invitation. You want to get your undriver license. And there's something about this that seems to just really spark people's curiosity and gets them to think about seeing new possibilities that they hadn't really realized. And it really helps them tap into their own resourcefulness that I believe all humans have in way more uh, dimension than we might ever even imagine. And so we invite people to make a pledge to reduce their car use in the coming month in some way that might work for them. And it doesn't have to be a big thing. It can be small wherever they are, something that might work for them. It's an experiment and they see what happens. So people who drive a lot to work or have to drive 100 miles a day even, they can still find something to do. They could make a carpool for a book group once a month, or they could walk to the farmer's market. People who already undrive a lot can also do a lot more. Sometimes people like those undrivers will encourage others to undrive by maybe helping a coworker find a safe bike route to work, or helping a non-bus rider learn the ropes to become a, an undriver too. So we also take people's pictures, they get their licenses. We have a bunch of props, things that people can wear and hold in their photograph. They get to express themselves however they want. <laughs> These three middle schoolers really wanted to have all three of them in each one of their license pictures. <laughs> so that's what we did with those. You can really have it your way, you don't get that at the DMV. <laughs> and then everybody gets their undriver license. And it really creates a lot of excitement. It's so great to see young people seeing that they really can influence family car use. And then it also really offers a sense of belonging. And there's this natural way that people want to share the licenses with their friends. And look at this. We've found, oh. And look at that. <laughs> we really will license anyone who wants to be licensed. <laughs> this undriver, his pledge was to take his family walking to the grocery store more often. So I think that's a great thing. 
So this process isn't just fun, it really does get results. We um, follow up with Undrivers at the end of the pledge month with a survey, and um, we've been getting some amazing response to that. 20 to 40% respond to the survey, and 92% report that they followed through on their undriving pledge. And this was their own experiment that they designed, and they did it. And even more impressive, 74% report that they actually started a lasting new transportation habit as a result of their pledge. So that's pretty great. Here's this thing that you know the research told us is the hardest thing to change. And here they are just changing away. So we noticed how everyone wanted to show their undriver license to, licenses to others. And so we started asking, do you show your license? And talk with others about undriving. And sure enough, 85% of them did. So this thing that's like um, the spark that gets you interested in making a pledge, it's also a reminder of your pledge. And then it becomes this sort of badge of honor, in the words of one undriver, to carry it forth into the world. And everyone becomes like an ambassador of undriving as a result. So here's how some undrivers put them on their backpacks. And they'll find themselves getting into conversations with people on the bus about undriving and getting around without a car. This woman put hers on her cane. <laughs> And in the words of one undriver, I feel like you gave us permission to raise the issue with others. Yes, that's so great. It's one of those things we just don't even talk about in this culture. It's almost as taboo as talking about money. But this is a great way to just start a conversation. So this really is an opportunity to challenge our own assumptions and just try them out. One undriver decided to get some rain gear, good rain gear, and then she said that I got over the idea that riding in the rain was too uncomfortable once I got the better gear. And another undriver, his experiment really proved to him that yes, the bus did take a bit longer to get him to work in the morning, but he discovered that there were all these other ways he could use that time. And one of them was he would catch up with his email on the bus on his phone, and then he'd arrive to work just ready to roll. So there's the things you to, you know, intend to try out and then what you discover as a result. And undrivers are finding that not only is it good for the planet, but it's good for our health, it's good for our wallets, it's good for our communities and just our overall connectedness. So it's a great way to go. So I just really, really love learning about what all these undrivers are up to, what they're pledging and what they're discovering as they you know, really find out all the joy and empowerment that can come from taking responsibility for our own transportation. So we've been noticing that there's some really kind of super amazing pledges that people have made that have really led to bigger concepts or sparks, as we've called, we're calling them, that other people can actually try on too. So I wanted to share a few of those. The first one is called reverse trip planning. And well, what's that? got a story about that. This is Soren, and when he came to the undriver licensing station with his family, he was the one who got super excited about getting his license. <laughs> so while they were in line, his mom, Kimberly, started thinking about, OK, well, what's our pledge going to be? And she thought about two things. Soren really loves riding the bus, and so does his brother. And she also thought about the two bus lines that were right outside their house. And she started wondering, you know, where do these things go? So her pledge was to take the two bus lines and ride them both end to end with her kids and see where it is that they go. And so that's what they did. They had a great time. They discovered some places where the family could go um, on outings via the bus. And she also noticed while they were riding along that her dentist had another office that was on the bus line. So they'd been all going to the one that was closer to their house, actually, but it was two bus lines away, and so it would have been really hard to do by bus. So she changed it up. They're now all going to that other dentist office instead, and they're saving like a dozen car trips every year just from that. So this is Kimberly's inspiration of instead of 
using trip planning to go, I want to go from A to B, to just do it backwards and see where the buses go. So that's reverse trip planning. So here's another one. This is John Raymer. He came to the station and started thinking about what he could do to pledge to reduce his car use. And he realized that every time he left the house, he got into his car. So he was like, wow, what can I pledge? And decided to pledge to take his car key off his key ring. Mm -hmm. And this meant that every time he got to the door, he had to stop and think first, do I need my car for this? And it turned out that he really didn't. And he ended up taking lots of trips by bicycle. He and his wife started walking more all around their neighborhood. He did find himself without his car key a couple of times when he needed it, and so he did end up putting it back in the ring, but not until he had completely changed the whole way he got around. So we call this concept, in honor of John, the car-free key ring. So you can try it out, too. So this is Betty, and she is 78 years old. She's a world traveler traveled all over the place by all sorts of means, but her favorite way to get around is by local bus. So she decided that she was going to take a trip around the Olympic Peninsula all on local bus transportation. So she took two weeks to do this. She traveled on, I think it was seven different bus lines all around there, and then the ferry boat to come back home. And she had a great time. She got to meet a lot of local people, and really had a completely different experience of the communities she visited by this means of transportation. And at the end, one of the things she was also really proud of was that her total transportation cost came to just under $20. <laughs> so, so this, our driving spark, is called Epic Transit. <laughs> and it turns out that this is really, there's a lot of people out there doing this. This is an article I came upon that talks about this couple here in the picture who are from Portland, and they took a really, really epic bus ride. They started outside of Seattle and then kept going, and they took all local buses with a little bit of hitchhiking thrown in there, and they made it all the way down to the southern part of Chile. So that's epic bus riding. Where could it take you? So this one, this is Kent Peterson, and he came to the very first licensing station we had. Now this was a really, really committed undriver. Um, Kent has been car free for over 30 years. He and his wife raised their family without a car, and he bike commuted at the time, I think it was at least 15 miles a day each way. So he had to stop and think for quite a while, actually, what he could do to reduce his car use. And this is what he came up with for his pledge. He's going to teach an adult how to ride a bike. And I just thought this was so amazing. Um, he was going to make an undriver, make it possible for someone to undrive in a way they never had access to before. And he did. That's the best part. So that this is really a great example of this undriving spark, that there's always more to discover. No matter where we are on the spectrum, we can move a little further along. And when we've kind of gotten to the end of it for our own behaviors, we can help others to move along the spectrum too. So those are just a few of the stories from the 8,600 and some drivers we've licensed so far. We're still counting. And so this behavior change potential is really in all of us. Sometimes we just need a spark to see it. The undriver license itself has been that spark for thousands of people. And I'm starting to see that we can each be that spark for each other too. And in fact, maybe that's our responsibility. I really believe that we all have the power to create change if we get curious and tap into our own resourcefulness. We can all get creative about getting around. So what's your spark? And how can you spark others? Sometimes the only available transportation is a leap of faith. Thank you very much. Thank you.